Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's regular scheduled meeting. This is the Board of Commissioners, August 9, 2022. We'll um, open with the Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner Cynthia Reed Ward, followed by the invocation led by Commissioner Truman Sinclair III. Please join us. Please thank the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we're here today to ask your blessings and guidance on the performance of our duties as elected officials. We pray for strength, love, knowledge, and understanding. Help us to recognize and solve the problems that are presented. Make our solutions fair and just to the best interests of everyone. Help us to overcome our shortcomings and keep us united as a team to work for the betterment of the city and its people. We pray in your name. Amen. Thank you. Glad to have everybody join us tonight. Thank you for being here. We start off by approving the agenda. Do we have a motion to approve? Mr. Tinsley with motion. Do we have a second by Mrs. Ward? All in favor, please signal by raise your hand. Five zero. First item under presentation and delegations. Recognize Tracy Pryor, administrative coordinator, as the July 2022 Strongest Link in the Chain Award recipient. Planning Development Director Chad Jacobs will address. Good evening and welcome. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so this is a, uh, a huge honor and a distinct pleasure. Uh, I love doing this. I love uh, talking about my, my teammates that I have. I have uh, amazing folks that uh, work with me. I hands down probably the best team that's uh, in the city. Uh, and so tonight uh, I'm very fortunate to recognize uh, one of those teammates that we have. So uh, Tracy has worked uh, for the city of Griffin as of August 2nd for 29 years. Uh, so, and Tracy has worked with us in a number of different capacities. I think she started out in customer service uh, and then uh, moved on as a permit technician and has been with us as an administrative coordinator for some time now. So uh, Tracy has always done a fantastic job with us, but, and, and one of the things that uh, has kind of been interesting, she's been there, you know, long enough, she's been through numerous directors and numerous changeover and staffing and things of that nature. And the processes kind of change and also it can get little frustrating and all that you're having to kind of learn new things and all that and so we have done that uh, over the last year uh, again working with a lot of the teammates that we have out there we've changed a few things and, and, and Tracy has jumped in and has been a fantastic teammate and um, has really kind of taken to especially over the last four or five months uh, she's really helped out developing new um, uh, forms. Uh, she's taken a, a, a bigger role in, in the uh, certificate of appropriateness uh, for the historic preservation uh, committee and uh, really kind of runs that essentially on her own. Uh, she's just doing a wonderful job and so it's just uh, it's a huge pleasure for me to be able to nominate her and uh, for a strong link uh, for July and so I'm, I'm very very happy that uh, she was selected for this and I couldn't uh, I just I'm very excited for it. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your Thank service you. to the city. I know you always want to go back to customer service. <laughs> <laughs> you serve in that capacity. So if you ever miss it, we will more be glad to figure that out for you. Of course, you work at the airport. Thank you, Chad, for nominating you tonight. Moving into um, another sad recognition here is Danny Pryor. Water distributor, distribution, wastewater collection superintendent for the city of Griffin in his retirement on August 16, 2022. Mr. Pryor served the city of Griffin for 33 years. Grant Rochette, uh, Watership Management, Brandon Lewis, address. So come on up. And I'm glad I got to see Danny last um, Sunday after, was it Sunday afternoon? About okay. out there on the Hobart Road with this crew doing it, might be one of his last major water line flows. So, uh, you're such a blessing. Yeah, well, it's not over yet. <laughs> <laughs> not over yet. <laughs> Brandon, would you like to? Yeah, um, so for three, a little over three years now, I've worked with Danny. Uh, Danny is a 
33 and a half years, I guess, and counting um, with the city of Griffin, it's rare to come across someone with that kind of tenure in a, any organization anymore. And um, But Danny's uh, knowledge of the system, his uh, commitment to this community is evident not only by that, but just by what he does each and every day. He's got a tough job. Um, he really does. And um, when I got here, you know, I already kind of knew that the position that Danny holds is in my opinion, the busiest position in the city of Griffin, maybe not always every day, but sometimes the phone never stops ringing. Um, and sometimes uh, he doesn't go home, you know, in a 24 hour period. So I've learned a lot from uh, observing Danny's leadership here. Um, I know his team has uh, been, you know, all the better for his, his guidance and leadership, uh, his development. He's going to, when he vacates his position on the 16th, he's going to leave a He's going to create a vacuum, um, and his team is going to be ready to fill that. Uh, and I think he's given them the tools and what they need to be successful um, so that we don't miss a beat. But just in case everything falls apart, Dan's not going too far away. So he's, I already know his new cell phone number he doesn't have yet. So, uh, well, Dan, would you like to say anything? It's all the Yes. It's been a good ride. I appreciate what the city's done for me. But it's time to time to put it across. Oh, is your wife here? Yes, she is. Come. Would you like to introduce the family? Everybody knows Belinda. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, my wife, Belinda, this is a better part of my gift. That's the truth. Yeah. <laughs> Ready? Yep. Brandon, come on. Yep. All right. Got it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Next item is to present a joint proclamation by Spalding County and City Griffin, welcoming Griffin Spalding County students back to school. I believe we have Mr. Pugh and Dr. Simmons here, so we can come up front along with our county manager as well. Welcome, sir. It's so good to see you. Okay. The superior spotting day. That's there right. you go. Gotta get that right for William Wilson. Right. <laughs> to Griffin plus Spalding County joint proclamation welcoming students back to school, whereas the Griffin Spalding County schools are preparing to begin the 2022 and 23 school year on August 3rd, 2022, whereas the social interaction is critical for for pre-adolescents and adolescents, as studies show that st students who miss in-person school time fall behind in learning. And whereas these Griffin Spalding County teachers play a vital role in shaping the lives of the children in this community, reach more than science, math, and language, they teach our children how to live. And whereas as COVID brought many unique challenges, Griffin Spalding County teachers work diligently to overcome those obstacles and continue their duty, dedication to educating our students. And whereas the outpouring of support from both organizations and individuals to help prepare children for the start of this school year is remarkable and commendable. And whereas the Af African proverb states, it takes a village to raise a child, and this philosophy is alive in the Griffin Spalding County community with partners who stand together to offer assistance and the dedicated teachers and staff ready to welcome students back for another productive school year. Now, therefore, it be resolved, we, the Spalding County Board of Commissioners and the City of Griffin Board of Commissioners, express our gratitude to the Griffin Spalding County Schools. We are honored to have these positive role models and mentors in our students' lives. We ask the Griffin Spalding County citizens to help welcome back our students as they begin the 2022-23 school year and thank the teachers, and administration, and support staff who work every day to ensure the students are well-educated and safe. Signed Clay Davis, Chairman of Spalding County, and Dr. Steve Ledbetter, County Manager, and Mayor Douglas S. Holberg, and City Manager Jessica W. O'Connor. So we'd like to present this to 
Y'all, yes, thank you very much. Do you have any words you'd like to say before we get a picture? Good evening, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, on behalf of our Board of Education, uh, 1,400 or so employees and 10,000 students that we serve, do know that we appreciate your support. We appreciate the enthusiasm and your presence on the first day of school was phenomenal. The love that was shown to our students and families, phenomenal. Keep it up. Uh, as I've said all year long, we're going together. We'll only go as far as we go together. So thank you for what you do. Thank you for your leadership and your service. Thank appreciate you. It. Well, I want to add just one yes, quick sir. thing. <clears throat> you made a new hire, uh, I guess it was last week, uh, Chief Donald Brick from West Point. Uh, little is, as it is known that Chief Britt was actually the first school resource officer ever in the state of Georgia. And it started right here um, in Griffin with our police department and Chief Donald Britt going to Griffin High School being a school resource officer. So to see him back with what went on throughout the country, uh, mainly Uvalde, Texas, to have a chief of police on board with our school system adds to that level of safety that we seek for our children here in our community. So thank you guys awesome. for making it higher and uh, I think it'll be a positive results here in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. all come together. Group picture. Oh, oh I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for coming forward. See who am I all together? <laughs> I was standing outside. I don't want to sit down. Rodney has to sit down because he's so tall. Everybody looking good to go? Yep. Cynthia, are you there? Okay. Ready? One, two, three. All right. You got it. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Appreciate you more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. presentations and delegations is reviewed financial reports for June 2022. Accounting Director Amanda Carmichael will address. And good evening and welcome. Good evening. Congratulations. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. We are presenting the June uh, 2022, 2022 financials that covers over the past 12 years, 12, 12 months. The total operating revenue for the end of the fiscal year was 100.23% with property taxes collected at 103%, totaling 4.1 million. Um, however, our TABT has dropped to 96% collection, which is 701,000. Uh, the total operating expense for the fiscal year is 92.46%. I would like to point out the capital for machinery and equipment was only at 63.49%. And that's due to our global uh, chip shortage or our supply chain crisis. So the global chip shortage affected the buying machinery, automobiles, electronics. Um, please be aware that you will probably see an increase in rollovers into the FY23 budget for the shortage of the capital that wasn't bought in the FY22 budget. Um, the total salaries and benefits were at 96%. Uh, loss collections were at 110, our SPLOS collections were at 114, and our T-SPLOS collections are at 94.86%. So doing pretty good. Do, does anyone have any questions? So the TBAT, TABT, what is it? That's the motor vehicle. Motor vehicle. Yeah. 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 Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, Ms. Okay. Carmichael. Thank Appreciate you. It. Moving into citizens' comment, at this time, the mayor opens the floor to comments from the audience. Comments should relate to a specific agenda item not listed on the agenda for a public hearing or to concern the jurisdiction of the city. Commission meetings serve the purpose of conducting city business and are not a forum for the unlimited expression of opinion. 
the mayor reserves the right to limit comments to matters germane to city business and may refer speakers to the city manager or other staff for resolution. With that being said, is there anybody on my left side like to come before the board? Anybody on my left side? Anybody on my right side like to come before the board? Okay. Moving into consent agenda, we have items five through 12. We have a motion to take the consent agenda as a whole. So move Mr. Tinsley with a motion, second by Mrs. Murray. All in favor of approving the consent agenda, please raise your hand. Six, zero. Moving into the regular agenda, item 13 is considered minutes of the City Griffin Board of Commissioners call workshop meeting on June 9, 2022. Commissioner McCord and Murray were absent. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Tinsley, second by Commissioner Ward. All in favor, please signal by raising your hand. That would be a four, zero, two, two abstentions of McCord and Murray. And item 14 is consent of the minutes of the City of Griffin Board of Commissioners regular meeting on July 26, 22. Commissioner McCord was absent. Do we have a motion to approve? This is Murray with a motion. Do we have a second? Second by Ms. Ward. All in favor, please signal by raising your hand. Five, zero, one with the Commissioner McCord abstaining. Item 15, consider the minutes of the City Group and Board of Commissioners call meeting with the Spalding County Water and Sewage Facilities Authority on July 27, 22. Commissioner Brock, Murray, and Tinsley were absent. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Mr. McCord with a motion. Mr. Ward with a second. All in favor, please signal by raising your hand. 4 0 2 with Murray and Tinsley abstaining. Item 16 is consider a resolution naming Amanda Carmichael, Director of Accounting, as designated officer authorized to request sales tax information from the Department of Revenue and resolving to request all vendor sales tax information described in OCGA 48-2-15-D.1 <coughs> for the City of Griffin from the period beginning July 1, 2021 through December 2031, 22. Question real quick. Okay. Can we get a motion first? Mm -hmm. We have a motion approved. So, uh, Ms. Flowers with a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Murray. Go ahead, Ms. Flowers. Uh, where this says particular period is the standard period a year and a half or? So, you actually have to submit this resolution anytime you request this document. So, we were covering our bases going back for at least a year. This should also last for the next six months and more than likely anytime we would request this in the future, even if we are still designating Ms. Carmichael as the designated officer, we would have to add that new period in. So, this is really just covering our bases for the remainder of the year. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Any other questions? With the motion from Flowers, second by Ms. Murray in favor of the resolution. All in favor, please signal by raising your hand. Six, zero. Item 17 is consider a resolution for section 2190 emergency procurement of the Griffin Code of Ordinance to ratify the purchase of a Caterpillar wheel loader in the amount of $213,552 from Yancey Brothers Source Well Contract. With a motion to approve the resolution. I make a motion. Ms. Murray with a motion, we have a second. Ms. Ward with a second. All in favor of the resolution, please signal by raising your hand. Six, zero. Item 18 is considered the purchase of the 2022 Western Star 4900 dump truck in the amount of $241,160 from JW Truck Sales, single source, and amend the budget accordingly. Do we have a motion to approve? Um, Ms. Um, Murray with a motion. Do we have a second? I second. Second by Ms. Ward. Okay. Go ahead with your question. Ma Are you saying uh, amend the budget to accordingly? Is this something that was not budgeted? It was budgeted. It's just that it came in a little over budget. So we're having to amend the budget. And it's really a GMA lease for three different items, all of which are public works equipment, one of which you've already approved. And the second one you just did after the Caterpillar wheel loader. And the third one is the dump truck. Out of the combined of those three, we end up about six thousand dollars short, so we're amending the budget to um, cover that six thousand dollars. Okay. And we just put it on the last one because that's the one that I guess falls short if you purchase it last. Okay. 
Okay. Any other questions? We have a motion for Ms. Murray and second by Ms. Ward for the purchase. All in favor, please signal by raise your hand. Six zero. Item 19 is consider approval of the form cemetery burial rights contract for the purpose of conveying burial rights in the city's perpetual care cemetery to various purchasers and consider resolution authorizing the execution of all cemetery burial rights contracts taking this form to create a binding contract conveying burial rights to the purchaser. With motion to approve. Is this something new? Sorry. No, we actually several, my understanding is several decades ago, changed uh, the type of contract uh, for our, our cemetery to where we're conveying burial rights rather than actually conveying a plot. Um, this contract really just lays out what the responsibilities are of the city and what the expectations are of the purchaser of that, uh, of those burial rights, um, specifically notifying us if they want to change and the person they want to designate and overall just buttoning things up legally. Um, the addition to this, though, is also the resolution where we're basically getting you guys to approve this contract as to form going forward so that we don't have to bring each individual contract back to you every time. Do we have a motion to approve? Ms. Murray with a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Mr. Tinsley with a second. Any other questions? All in favor, please signal by raise your hand. Six zero. Item 20 is consent to amending the master service agreement with Lenslock Inc. for the addition of 49 in car deck camera, which includes setup, installation, and maintenance with a recurring cost of $74,061 each year. This will bring the total cost of the contract, including in car camera and body worn camera, to $132,991 per year for five years. Do we have a motion to approve? Mr. Tinsley with a motion. We have a second. Mr. Wolf, uh, Mr. McCord with a second. All in favor of amending the mass service agreement, please signal by raising your hand. Six zero. Item 21 is considered revisions to the Main Street Program Board's bylaws and procedures. Economic Developer Director Jeremy Stratton is here to address the questions. Do we have a motion to consider the revisions to the Main Street Board's program bylaws? Ms. Murray with a motion, second by Mr. McCord. Any questions? All in favor, please signal by raise your hand. Six zero. Item 22 is considered service agreement with Sweet Clean Inc. for comprehensive cleaning services of Historic City Hall on a bi-weekly basis and the amount, total amount of $9,346.15 for the year 26 services, including an initial service at a rate of $692.40. And 25 routine bi weekly services at a rate of $346.15 per service. We have a motion to approve this service. So moved. Mr. Tinsley with a motion. Do we have a second? Mrs. Ward with a second. And a question by Commissioner Flowers. Uh, cleaning expenses into a fee that will be charged to persons or group when cleaning services are needed. Like so uh, the additional quote that is on there, the post event cleaning. Well, actually, that may be the word. Is that what you're referencing? I'm looking on. I'm just on the cover sheet for that, but um, I'm just wondering. I, I, I assume that it would the fees would be passed along. Oh, I see this post event quote. Um, I'm just wondering because the cover sheet says as needed or something like that, like how that's going to be determined. So sometimes we have um, HCH is rented out to our various authorities or sometimes departments. If it's a small enough event, that's not something that we would necessarily need a cleaning fee for if you're just using the conference room. But that event cost for the cleaning, that will be determined by the city manager and uh, the director for economic development when we contract for the event is entered into. If it's needed, then it's made a part of that rental cost. If it's not needed, then it's something we don't assess and we don't schedule for the to take place. So it's kind of arbitrary? The post-event cleaning? Or how the specific event gets designated, whether or not it's so I hear you saying like if, if it's a meeting and it's eight people in the conference room, it likely doesn't need to be cleaned. But then how do we distinguish between 25 people cramming into the conference room and trashing it versus 50 people going into the larger room, but maybe they didn't trash it. So I'm, I'm wondering like, 
that seems a little arbitrary or is there some clear language about what the parameters are for who gets charged for cleaning? So this is just the contract for the cleaning company itself for them to provide us with that quote, but we will actually, we're currently working on three different uh, contracts that you, you all will approve as to form for HCH rental. One of them is a meeting contract, one of them is an event contract, and one is a no cost contract for our standard rentals, such as for departments. Um, a good example would be, would be uh, Dr. Keller's retirement party. That would be something that the departments would, would have to pay for the cleaning costs after that event. Um, the no cost contracts will be entirely at the city manager's discretion. That's generally how that's been set up in the past. Um, but I wouldn't say that it's an arp it's an arbitrary uh, note in there because we are putting a line on them that says that if it does get trashed, it will be taken out of any damage deposit that we collected. And if it's a no cost meeting that they signed up for, they would lose the ability to rent that at no cost in the future. Okay. So, I, well, what I what I hear you saying is that there will be language coming before us in the future that designates. And I only say that because I see where there's a potential for that to be unfair or improper because. My cousin wanted to rent it and they didn't get charged for cleaning up, but then we charged someone else who had a very similar size loop. Okay. So so as long as that concern is noted for me that I would like to make sure that we do see that language that offers parameters, then I'm I'm good to proceed. We'll keep that in mind for the HCH contract. It's almost done. We're just waiting on a couple more forms to get cash. Okay, thank you. Motion from Mr. T Tinsley, second by Commissioner Ward. Any other questions? All in favor of the service agreement, please signal by raise your hand. Six zero. And then the final item on the agenda is commissioner to appoint one member of the Griffin Main Street Board to fulfill the unexpired term of John Joyner, who resigned from his appointment effective June 21, 22. This is a business property owner appointment with term expiring 12 31 24. We've got two names um, that have been sum um, submitted. Ms. Ashley Martin and Shana McCormick. We have a um, open floor for nominations. Have any nominations? I'd like to nominate Shana McCormick. Any other nominations? I'm we, have, to close nominations. we have a motion to close nominations. Second. Second. Commissioner Flowers, second by Commissioner McCord. All in favor of closing nominations, please signal by raising your hand. Six zero. All right, moving into city manager's report. All right, very briefly, our archway mini retreat is tomorrow from two to five at the county extension. I did send you an email earlier this week that had a couple of attachments in regards to things that we will discuss tomorrow, such as the community school and mental health. Um, so feel to look at those before two o'clock tomorrow at the county extension office next to where we vote, not the senior center. Um, also, just wanted to give you a heads up that Dr. Ledbetter and I met with our GDOT representatives, a lot of different engineers who have been in constant contact lately with the railroad. They are looking at finally completely correcting those crossings at Green Valley and Gate Ridge. Unfortunately, it will require a closure of State Route 16. There is no way to do it otherwise, from what I understand, um, about seven or eight years ago when they did it. The first time they had to completely close 16, they're looking at having to close it for at least a week. Um, they are wanting to do it the week of fall break, so that's October 10th. They asked that we go ahead and put it out there as soon as we could, so this is the first time I've seen you publicly. So there is your first notice. Um, GDOT is working on a press release with an official alternative detour route. I have asked that they use 20 and not 155 for obvious reasons, so I hope that they will do that. Um, I think they said it's about six miles more if you actually go 20, and that's if you did a round trip, so just three miles more if you were just going one way. Um, I really am pushing that they not use 155 and come right through downtown. Um, just to end on a good note, congratulations to both Danny and um, Tracy Pryor, although not related, but same last name. Um, it's a, always an, an exciting thing to be able to recognize an employee for service while they're still here and then also to recognize someone um, for what they've done for the city for 33 and a half years. So just wanted to publicly thank them for what they do um, every day. And I think there's a couple of you I did not catch before the meeting. I need to talk with you all just very briefly afterwards in regards to an employee health update. Thank you. Ms. Carter. No comments. 
comments today. Drew is also <laughs> on Drew, over Drew's the still on the line. Anything, Drew, tonight? I have no comments. Thank you, Drew. Commissioner Murray. Um, I did a, what Jessica or City Manager Jessica Connor says about uh, the employees and everything. Congratulations. And Miss Danny, he taught me so much through the years, and um, I know that our staff now will continue his legacy, but going to miss him. And congratulations, Tracy, and to Amanda as well. We're very fortunate. Thank you, staff, for keeping us thriving as a city. Um, regarding the uh, proclamation for welcoming the uh, city and uh, Spalding County students back to school, I just want to congratulate the class of 2023 seniors and uh, also thank our teachers and hope that they all have a very healthy and safe year. Any further comment? Commissioner Flowers? No comment. Commissioner Ward? No comment. Commissioner Tinsley? Nothing to help. Commissioner McCord? No, I'll say that all. Uh, thank you all for being here tonight. Um, Y'all got a letter, a copy of it. Um, that was from Senator, going to Senator Ossoff office and, and his administrator bonus. Um, this is one of the functions of the I-75 Central Florida Coalition working um, to deal with this regional issues. Um, they will actually, I-75 Central Florida Coalition will actually be here tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock at Central at Historic City Hall. And the items are gonna be brought to the table as updates on the um, potential of um, inner city rail from Nashville to Savannah, as well as an update on the uh, Butts County development at Georgia 16. And then Randy Peters will be giving a brief update on the airport to solicit support from folks from the region. So that'll be tomorrow. Our last summer concert series event is this Saturday night. The band Them will be playing from seven to nine. So um, it's been a good summer concert series. We've been averaging 100 plus or minus every week. So if you haven't had a chance to join us for that event, seven to nine o'clock this week at the park at six. With that being said, is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? Commissioner Murray, with a motion, we have a second. Second. Take a mic. Commissioner Ford, all in favor? Say aye. 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 So, Jessica needs to see.